Oh, no. Oh, nope. There we go. Hello, mountain bike enthusiasts. Welcome to the Mountain Bike Action Magazine YouTube channel. My name is JJ, and today we have the Santa Cruz High Tower V3. This is a trail bike with 150 millimeters of travel in the front, 145 millimeters of travel in the rear, with a flip chip, and right now we're in the low in the flip chip, and that brings it to 64.5 degree head angle. So we're gonna test this thing out, and you're gonna come with me. Let's go. With 150 millimeters of suspension in the front and 145 millimeters in the rear, the Santa Cruz Hightower can be solidly placed in the all-mountain category of mountain bikes. That means it'll handle anything you put in front of it, from steep tech to fast and flowy to epic all-day adventures in the mountains. The Hightower we tested is the GX Axis RSV build, which features, you guessed it, a GX Axis wireless 12-speed drivetrain with a 10 to 50 tooth cassette. Ours also came with Santa Cruz's carbon reserve rims laced to Industry 9 1 to 1 hubs, SRAM Code RS brakes, and a RockShox Reverb Shadow Plus dropper post. The fork is a 150mm travel Fox 36 Performance Elite with the Grip 2 damper, and the shock is a RockShox Super Deluxe Select Plus that works with the VPP suspension system for 145mm of rear travel. The cockpit is a mixed bag of Santa Cruz carbon bars and grips, a Bergtech 42mm stem, and a WTB Silverado saddle. The tires provided are a pair of 29 by 24 inch Maxxis DHR2s with EXO casing and a 3C Max Grip rubber compound in the front and Max Terra in the rear. Santa Cruz made a few changes to the high tower to refine, but not fully change the identity of the bike. It has the same amount of travel as the old one, with a few upgrades and tweaks. The VPP, or Virtual Pivot Point Leakage Design, has been adjusted to reduce anti-squat in the first 40% of the travel over the previous model. Santa Cruz claims that this noticeably improves suspension sensitivity in all riding scenarios due to reduced chain influence on the suspension. Santa Cruz updated a lot on the frame, including the geometry. With the flip chip in the low setting, the head tube angle is 64.5 degrees, and the seat tube angle is 76.7 degrees, with a wheelbase of 1245 millimeters and a reach of 472 millimeters. All of these measurements are from the size large frame we tested. Santa Cruz released this bike with size-specific chainstay lengths to keep riders of all sizes centered equally on the bike. Like with the Mega Tower, Santa Cruz has added a storage compartment in the down tube of the frame where the bottle cage attaches. They're calling it the glove box and have included two small bags inside to house tools, food, tubes, jackets, or whatever you may need on any given ride. Another useful addition is the sag window carved into the lower seat tube so it's easier to set the sag on an otherwise unreachable shock. It's positioned perfectly so you can both see the stanchion and move the sag indicator. Now that we know about the bike, let's go ride it and see if it actually works. We'll start with the climbing. It's safe to say we were impressed right off the bat on the first hill we climbed. We questioned for a second if we were on a trail bike instead of an all-mountain bike. It climbs very well, almost thoughtlessly. Even in the low setting on the suspension, we weren't even tempted to reach for the climbing switch on the shock. We experienced little to no pedal bob even when pushing the pedals to the metal. That said, the shock wasn't dead when pedaling. It stayed active and gave us traction even on the steepest, loosest climbs. Tech climbing wasn't a problem either, and the grip remained throughout any climb we could think of to give it a challenge. Like I said though, the climbing was thoughtless. It wasn't a chore to push the bike up, and we never felt uncomfortable even on the longest, most boring climbs. The high tower just works, and we could even say it climbs as well as any trail bike we've tested recently. So, we've completed the climb and now we're pointed downhill. Again, the high tower leaves little left to be desired. We felt comfortable on any downhill we faced, whether it was steep and loose or fast and flowy with lots of berms. There was a light feeling to the bike that made floating over tech or jumping a tabletop or gapping some rocks just effortless. If we trusted the bike, the bike would get us through, and that's just it. We wouldn't go racing any enduros on it, at least not seriously, nor would we expect to get any KOMs on the gnarliest downhill tracks of Mammoth Mountain, but we wouldn't hesitate to at least ride those trails on the high tower. We know we'd survive, however slow we'd have to go. Is there anything we didn't like about this bike? Well, not really. 
Once we'd trimmed the bars and worked out the kinks in the suspension setup, we really didn't touch anything. The Santa Cruz Hightower is a wonderful bike. It's not heavy either at 31 pounds 11 ounces without pedals. The GX Axis RSV build isn't cheap at $9,799, but it's also available in the R spec at $54.99. As of now, there are only Carbon C and Carbon CC frame options, of which ours was the first. If you have the budget and want a bike that performs, this may be the one for you. Santa Cruz also carries one of the best lifetime warranties on the market, so you won't have to worry about it if you break it. All in all, we've thoroughly enjoyed our time in the Hightower 3 and can't wait to ride it some more. If you want to read the full review, see an upcoming issue of Mountain Bike Action Magazine. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you have any suggestions for future videos or things we could do better, let us know by leaving a comment below. If you want to see more mountain bike content coming out all the time, you can not only subscribe to our YouTube channel, but also to our monthly magazine, Mountain Bike Action Magazine. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching, until we ride again.